talking about our talents. Please join me now in our call to worship. God calls us to use our gifts for the building of God's kingdom. But we are afraid. Christ urges us to find courage and not look back. But I get saved so small. The Spirit offers us everything we need. But what if you fail? True gifts, true the gifts you have been given, we will celebrate our gifts as we worship God this day. 
Please stand if you are able and join with me in singing Rejoice, the Lord is King. You heard about Boaz. You know what they called Boaz before he was married? Ruthless. <laughs> I got a million of them. Come on. <laughs> Hurry. Okay, here we go. Okay.
Good morning. Good morning, children. Good morning, all the children at home. I hope you're all enjoying your time. And I'm sorry for those of you who are not in school right now, but stay safe, stay healthy, and do what you're supposed to do to keep that virus out of your homes. So today, today's um, scripture is about something called talents. What's a talent? Do you have any talents? How about you? What do you what's your talent? Can you sing? Yeah. Can you speak Spanish? Yeah. You speak Spanish muy bueno. That's it. How about you, Josh? What do you have for a talent? Are you artistic? Good at sports? You play in the band. What do you play in band? Percussion. <laughs> yeah. Okay, everybody has talent. I, I have tons of talent. You didn't know that, did you? Okay, well, I'm going to show you a few of them today. Uh-huh. Got it? I can... I can't slam dunk this basketball. I always wish I could. Our neighbors used to put their basketball hoop down to like four feet and look out for us. Oh, it went in until we broke the hoop. Okay, um, watch this. What do you think about that talent? That's going to get me a long way, isn't it? You betcha. Talent. I have another talent. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> what do you think about? Pretty good, huh? Don't do it with eggs. I learned that a long time ago. I could do magic, too. You want to see that, talent? Yes. <laughs> Hey, I need a piece of your hair. Can you lean forward, please? Oh. Got it? Did that hurt? Okay, good. <laughs> what do you think about that, huh? <laughs> Yeah, that, all that got me very far in my talent. You know, we, we all have talents. And God has given us talents that we probably don't even realize we have them. One of the talents that God has given you is the Holy Spirit is inside you and you can share that with other people. That is a talent. It's something you have to work on. It's something that that comes sometimes very naturally to some people, and other people we kind of have to work on our talents. But God gives us all talents. Now, the worst thing we can do with the talent is to waste it. That means you don't use it. So let me ask you this, Tate. Do you speak Spanish at home to mom and dad? Sometimes. You speak at school quite a bit, because half of your day is in Spanish, isn't it? Yeah, that's a lot. All day? So all day Spanish one time, and then the next day it's English. So all day you have to speak Spanish. Wow, isn't that something? What a talent to have. Now as you grow up, you may need that talent to help communicate with people who really need to know about Christ. And your talents of music, Josh, can be shared with people by playing maybe in a praise band or doing something like that to honor God. Our talents are there for us to use. And a lot of them say, oh, my talent's too small. Or my talent doesn't make any difference. You know, like me spinning the basketball. What's that going to do to change the world? Well, it made a few people smile. And my juggling, which is quite unique, is something that I do to help little kids. 
refocus on things if they're worried or upset. Our talents are important. And God tells us in this passage that if we ignore our talents and don't use the talents that God has given us, we are shameless in his eyes. We must use our talents. So as you think about the special things you have inside of you, and there are more things than you just said today, and that goes for everybody. You have talents. You need to share your talents. Don't be shy about it. Don't worry if you're not the best at first or it doesn't make a difference. Share your talents because God gave them to you for a reason. You don't know the reason, but God did give them to you. So please let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the talents you have given us and help us to understand what they really are. Help us to share those with other people so that we can bring others closer to Christ. Help us be a reflection of you in our everyday lives and keep our talents focused on Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay, anybody have a birthday? No birthdays. There you go. Like, well, try some candy. And I take that back. Jesus You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one with two talents came forward saying, Master, you handed over me two talents, and I have made two more. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things, but I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who received one talent also came forward saying, Master, I, I knew you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not, sc not scatter seeds. So I was afraid, and I went, and I hid your talent in the ground. Here's what, here, here you have what is yours. But his master replied, you wicked and lazy slave. You knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather what I did not scat scatter? Then you ought to have invested my money so the bankers, with bankers, and then on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. 
So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For those, for all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even they have what they have will be taken away. For as worthless, for as for this worthless slave, throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. May God bless the reading of his holy scripture. Brothers and sisters in Christ, today's scripture text is a familiar parable of the talents. Three servants are given talents or money to manage while their master is away on a trip. Each one receives an amount equal to his ability according to our text. One is given five talents, another is given two talents, and a third is given one talent. When the master comes home, the two servants who invested their talents present the master with a 100% increase. The third servant, the one given the least amount, buried his talents in the ground and returns to his master the same amount he was given. The servant is severely reprimanded and called wicked and lazy according to the new revised standard version but if you go back to the original greek word it should be slothful slothful means the opposite of faithfulness what little he has is taken away and given to another servant so let us see how jesus described the condition of the servant that only received one talent in, and I'm reading verses 24 to 25. Then one who had received the one talent also came forward saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. Take note that nothing is lost, but something is not right. The gift of opportunity was missed because this servant, he, instead of scattering the seed of his talent, and what was his reason? He said, I was afraid. I was afraid. How often we hear this justification from people who fail to faithfully live their call. I was afraid. Too many times these words, brothers and sisters in Christ, have been a door closing an invitation to grow. I was afraid to love. I was afraid to let another love me. I was afraid to reach beyond the familiar, to share my faith, to raise my voice, to stand apart, to move beyond a stereotype. Church, in the terrain, in the in the in the terrain of the heart, I was afraid is buried in a place both deep and yet highly accessible. You know, when, when we attend gatherings sponsored by the district or the annual conference, I don't want to sit with my sister, especially when we have some discussions. Because your sister will go into just hold my hand and say, just keep quiet. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want, she doesn't want me to talk, but, you know, I, I hate it when... I come to the point and say, I want to say something, and then I feel I was so afraid. And I miss the point of being a faithful participant in that conversation. 
But you know, when you read the text, you have to give this third servant credit. He was only following what was, in his day, a sensible, responsible course of action. Remember, a talent was one of the largest values of currency in the Hellenistic world at the time. A silver coinage. You had one to get help carrying home. It weighed between 57 and 74 pounds. This is 15 years wages for a day laborer. About a quarter million dollars when adjusted for inflation. In ancient times, the safest place on earth for something of such great worth was underground. Josephus, first century historian, said that it was not unusual for people to bury their treasure during times of military conflict. Further unexpectedly discovering underground treasure, a scenario we stumbled upon in one of Jesus' parables was not uncommon. If you want to secure your money, advise a rabbi from antiquity, bury it. Do not ever take risk of investing it. Bury it. Do not ever take risk of investing it. Oh, brothers and sisters in Christ, in telling this story in which such prudent and proven protective practice is challenged, here, Jesus uh, suburbs conventional wisdom toward a more faithful end. Here, Jesus is teaching that faithfulness is not about being safe and secure. Here it is about your willingness to take creative risks for God's realm or God's kingdom. Here, the sensible thing is the wrong thing according to the culture of the time because God's reign manifests itself not in safety but in surrender, not in guardedness but in growth. You know, the greatest danger when it comes to our relationship with God and His kingdom is our unwillingness to take creative risks for God's realm or kingdom. That is the greater risk. I remember my dad when he was appointed in one of the remote places in the Philippines. At the time, because there was not a cemented highway or an asphalted highway to go there. And it was, you have to, if you want to go to the market, you have to time it because in the morning, every, every, every possible transportation will go to the market. So if you miss the time, you have to wait for another day to be able to, to go to the market. So you have to time it. And then you have to also time, you have to be careful about observing your time because you miss going back if you miss those possible transportation. And one of the danger of the time, uh, the, uh, uh, one of the dangers of the time was the danger of the Communist Party of the Philippines, where they were like fighting everywhere. And so that it's hard for a pastor to visit, it's hard for a pastor to conduct home Bible study because of that danger. On the other hand, there is also a possible danger from the military. They might accuse you of being a spy for the Communist Party of the Philippines. And what happens, I, will, we, I remember it very clearly in my mind even today because they have, the military had put up a military camp in front of the church. Just in front of the church. So we have, we, we, we grew up in front of, 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 of we grew up in, in the company of this military. Once in a while we invite them to come to the house. And you know, Many times my mom 
cried out to our dad to stop, especially after 6 p.m. to stop this thing and stop doing Bible study in homes. But my dad said, this is the risk that we have to take for the kingdom of God to spread in this place. Young as I was at the time, I was only in grade two, grade three. No? You go out and 100 meters, 200 meters away from the church, you see dead people along the street with shotgun, with, with, with bullets in their body or it's very graphic. I don't want to say the other one because it's very graphic. And we were young at that time. But my dad took a risk. He was also at the time asked to circuit other places. So he's been in that place to other two places. And the only possible means for which he can travel is by riding his bicycle. Imagine going back to his last church or circuit community going back home at about 8, 9 p.m. That was too risky for him considering that he has a family. But he understood that the greatest danger when it comes to our relationship with God and His kingdom is our unwillingness to take creative risks for God's realm or God's kingdom. As I remember his life, I also remember the life of the circuit riders here in America. When you are singing the hymn, are, you, are we yet alive? But to remember that no one of them get past 35 years old. But they have invested their lives and no wonder that at some point you have United Methodist Church in every four blocks here in the U.S. Or one in every two persons in the United States of America. Brothers and sisters in Christ, if you follow the biblical revelation, you will come to know that God creates people and gives them gifts and all responsibilities and all directions. After creation, God departs to heaven and people live on earth. But God will return at the death of the person or through a special historical event or at the end of time. There will be judgment. The question is, did the creature act in accord with the will of the creator? Did the creature act in accord with the will of the creator? Just the Gospel of Matthew is filled with dire consequences. The truth is if people do not respond to Jesus and his teaching correctly, they are in for a considerable amount of trouble. You can read them in Matthew 22, in Matthew 25, in Matthew chapter 18, in Matthew chapter 13, in Matthew uh, 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 chapter 13 verses 24 to 40. And we are not here this morning to discuss these dire consequences. I hope that it is enough for each one of us to know that the gospel of Matthew is filled with dire consequences. If people do not respond to Jesus and his teachings correctly, we will be in considerable trouble. That is the hard reality of the gospel of Matthew. That's why in this parable, Jesus teaches his followers how they should live even when he is no longer with them. The unfaithful servant shares duty with the master when the master is away, but the wise one continues to work faithfully and honestly. In this parable, Jesus calls his followers to participate in bringing God's reign into the world. 
Remember, God's kingdom is priceless. As followers of Christ, we are to be faithful servants to strive to grow God's reign, taking risks of bringing life abundance to others. Think about that, brothers and sisters. A servant's highest reward is to be allowed to go on serving. That is the greatest and the highest reward that we can receive from God, to be allowed to go on serving. If one person refuses to serve, someone else will. God's work goes on. What we have, we are free to use. We may use it. We may abuse it. We may lose it. Further, the parable of Jesus reminds us that we are judged by our faithfulness. Our willingness to take creative risks for God's realm is a reminder of this reality. We are judged by our faithfulness. We are not judged by our prettiness, our smartness, or our size. To the first two servants, the master said, Well done, good and trustworthy slaves. To the third servants, he had said, You wicked and lazy or slothful slave. Oh, we don't want to hear the word slave in our time because it has so much negative connotation. But in the Bible, the highest description of, of a slave is in the context of royalty. A slave carries the identity of his master. You are known by your master. Jesus said, the master said in this parable, you wicked and slothful servant. Or oh, the third servant revealed a defiant attitude, not willing to take risk for the master. He expressed himself rudely. He knew that he had been unfaithful. Furthermore, brothers and sisters in Christ, when we willingly take creative risk for God's realm, we are rewarded by a more significant task. Not only as an individual followers of Christ, but also as the body of Christ. Remember what Wesley said about the church. The church is the visible manifestation of the invisible kingdom of God. The church is the visible manifestation of the invisible kingdom of God. That's why when we as a church and when we as individual followers of Jesus willingly take creative risks for God's realm, we are rewarded by a, by a more significant task. The windows of heaven will be opened as proclaimed by prophet Malachi. But more comes from heaven than monetary gifts. There are more excellent gifts from God. Or you do a good job on something and you are offered a bigger job. The reward for such responsible service is opportunity to further uh, and, 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 uh, and, and larger service in the kingdom of God. That's why Christ followers are supposed to be the one who enter the reign of God, who get Jesus' mission. But the true measure, but the true measure of our commitment and faithfulness to Christ is whether we invest the priceless treasure of God's reign, helping it grow to welcome those who need its life, or bury the gift and keep it hidden for ourselves. If we have honestly and authentically received the kingdom of God, then we have no choice but to be participants in its life-giving, grace-bringing, and abundance sharing of wrath. Brothers and sisters in Christ, Jesus never asked us to do more than we can do. 
But He does ask us to do something. No one can tell us what to do. Yet God leads us. But God, yet God can lead us as followers if we are willing to take creative rest for God's work. You know, God often nudges us in the, in the, high, in the right direction. Whether we have five talents or two talents or a single talent, God always shows us how to risk. A true follower, follower of Jesus is one who is creative and useful in the building up of God's kingdom. Of God's kingdom. I hope that we respond to Jesus' invitation this morning. His invitation to take creative risk for the kingdom of God. And I would like to end this sermon by singing this poem written by Carolyn Winfrey Gillette. You can sing this using the tomb of oh Jesus I have promised or the church one foundation. I would like to sing three stanzas of this poem and I would like to use the tune of the church one foundation. You give to some five talents, to others two or three, to some you give one talent to manage faithfully. For you, O oh Lord, are loving and don't demand success. You may recall your people to lives of faithfulness. You give your church the gospel, good news for us to share. You give us great compassion for neighbors everywhere. You give us skills to serve you and loving work to do. We're blessed to be a blessing and called to rest for you. Oh God, it seems much safer to live from day to day, protecting what you lend us and hiding it away. Yet all these gifts can flourish when hidden in the ground. When we are brave to share them, your talents will abound. Church, we are called to take creative risk for the, for, for, for the kingdom of God, for God's realm. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. this time stand as you are if you are able and join in our song of affirmation move me and faith we sing no the united methodist hymn <laughs> Sponsored by the Black Performance Club, 
and we still we have some reservations, but we still have some opens. So if anybody decides they'd like to have a lasagna dinner, please stop by at the Memorial Building. Mm. Thank you, John. Any other announcements? Okay, we'll move on to joys and concerns. Joys and concerns with microphone in the back. Marcy and I have a joy. Our grandchildren's football team won their semifinal game Friday and qualified again for the state championship game. It will be Thursday. This is the second year in a row. Congratulations. All right. Seeing others, Pastor? I would like us to um, lift up prayers for Tim and Barb, uh, the father and mother of Jennifer Stuben. Uh, Tim is now out of the ICU uh, and we continue to pray. And the last news I received from Barb is that um, they, they took her to the, to the hospital. So we, we continue to uh, lift them up in our prayers. We are hoping that they will be able to recover from what they are experiencing right now. Uh, I would like us also to lift up um, the Stobinau, uh, Stobinau uh, family. Uh, we all know we prayed for John last Thursday. And then uh, after that, I opened my Facebook and I came to know that she already passed away. And, um, I think about Tuesday, and she passed away Thursday. So, we, if you if you if you were here the first time we did an an in person worship, uh, the first Sunday of June, um, they were here with us. They are from Waterloo, and um, we we pray for. The family, we also need to pray for Dale. Uh, he is also diagnosed to have uh, infected with COVID. And we will continue to, to pray for his recovery. Um, so uh, uh, I hope that you can include them in our prayers. Let us pray. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you this morning grateful for your openness that welcomes us here. We need you loving God more than we need anything. More than the next breath of air, more than the next meal, more than the rest, more than labor. Grant that as we come to you now seeking you, that we shall find you. Grant to each of your children the grace gifts you have planned for us this morning. You who own the cattle of a thousand hills and the hills on which they stand, shower us with your care, Father God. Let your forgiveness wash over us and cleanse us for, for, of, of every sin. Where we are blinded by care of this world, open our eyes that we may see. Where there is troubled soul, give your gentle, encouraging touch. If by chance there are some at the point of exhaustion, on the, on the verge of despair, Lord, place your strong hand upon their souls and help them through another day and tomorrow, through another and then through another and through another and forever, Father God. We love you, Lord. And we seek to do your will. Our love is not perfect. Our love is not complete. We pray as did our Lord's disciples long ago. Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith, especially in this time of great turbulence. May your hand of loving mercy guide us to seek you and your way for us. May your name be honored and your people be strengthened. Father God, We live up unto you, our brothers and our sisters and our loved ones and our children who are in need of your 
care and in need of your miracle healing. We lift up unto you this, our child, young boy Braxton. We pray for Brother Dave and, Kim and, and Sister Kim. We pray for Dwight and Joe and Father God. We pray for the music family, for the Kaiser family. And also, we pray for Sister Deb, Deb Coster, Father God, who is preparing for the memorial service of her mom, Norma, this coming Sunday, November 22. We pray, Father God, for Brother Chuck and Brother Marilyn. We pray for Sister Carolyn and Brother Don. We pray for Brother Paul and this young boy, Lane, Father God. We pray for Brother Cornell and, and Sister Kath, for the whole Giftman family as they continue to be in unity in their longings and desires to receive Cornell's miracle healing. We pray for Sister Marilyn, for Sister Carrie, for Brother Bud and Sister Priscilla. We pray for Janelle, Sister Janelle, for Dana, Father God, we pray for Craig, Brother Craig, for Melba, for George and Galene, for Emily. We pray for the essential workers who are working so hard, Father God, to provide care for those who are touched by COVID. We pray for those people touched by COVID who are now engulfed in this deep, deep fear, Father God. We pray that they may receive the gift of medication provided by these essential workers, the doctors, the nurses, the medical staff, working so hard, Father God, to provide this medical cure. But we seek for your healing, for the fullness and wholeness of, 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 of their being. Because right now, Father God, many of them are swimming in this flood of fears and anxiety. Many of them are now at the edge of life without hope, with nowhere to go. But we believe, Father God, that you are still at the realm of your throne. You are still in charge, Father God. That when we feel that there is so much wrong in this world, you are still the creator, you are still the father, Father God, our father. So we pray for each one of us, we pray for our respective families, we pray for our community, Father God, the graduate community. We pray, Father God, that with the life and ministry of your church, this church as the visible manifestation of the invisible kingdom of God, with our willingness to take risk for your realm, Father, that people may come to see hope and dreams and see that indeed there is grace, that indeed there is love in the one we worship, the one true and living God. We pray for our military families, we pray for our policemen, our police women, our firefighters, Father God, who are also putting their lives on the line. We pray for their safety, for their security. We pray for their strength, Father God. We pray for our leaders. We pray for those elected to lead this country, Father God. Lord, may you give them wisdom. May you give them wisdom. And when they become foolish in their promise to your people, may the church, the visible manifestation of the invisible kingdom, may come to this reality with boldness that we need to stand on the ground of faith. We need to stand on the teachings of Jesus. We need, Father God, to grow even the smallest talent that you have given into the life of the church. So we ask that may the church proclaim the true gospel 
so that our readers will come to know where wisdom is, where they can find the true wisdom, and it is only in Jesus. Father God, we pray for the rest of the world. We pray for justice and peace. We pray for righteousness, Father God. We pray for more grace and more love and more care in the whole world. We pray for our brothers and sisters who are suffering because of the movement of natural calamities. We remember the Filipino people who are suffering so much, Father God. May you awaken their eyes and their faith, their spirit, Father God, to consider the call of being a good steward of your environment. Remind the Filipinos, Father God, the essential of protecting their mountains, their forests, their rivers, so that they will never have to go through this again in their lifetime, Father God. So we pray for the government, for all the NGOs, and especially the United Methodist Church working 24 hours every day to rescue people who are affected by this natural calamity, Father God. We pray for our church. When we arrive to that place of safety and security, when the world tells us that this is the way to go, and this is the way for safety and security. Remind your church, Father, of this parable, of this challenge of conventional wisdom. Yes, Lord, we might not please everyone, but the greater danger is that when we become unfaithful as a church, when we don't take a creative rest for your kingdom. Father God, there is only one mission that you have set before us. There is only one mission that you have entrusted to each one of us, to grow, to become an active participate, participants in the growing of your kingdom. This is what you are counting from us, Father God. May we have to, to take the risk even to the point of losing friends, even to the point of being insulted. Lord, may we find the way to your truth so that we will always choose to be faithful to you. So we ask that you bless our bishops, that you open their eyes and their hearts to the reality of the teachings of Jesus, that we pray for the delegates to the general conference, our lay leaders, our pastors, our superintendents, and the whole church, Father God, that we may come to embody the United Methodist Church as the one that manifests the invisible kingdom of God here in our time, in our place, and in this world. May you always find us faithful. And as we go forth from this place where we come and gather to worship the Lord, may we go forth to those places where you have called us to use the talents that you have entrusted to us. Empower us, Father, to use them, not to bury them in our journey. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. Please stand now if you're able and join me in our final um, hymn, Make Me a Servant. 2176 and the faith we sing. <laughs>
Brothers and sisters in Christ, may the one who created the universe call you by name. May Christ bless you with joy. And may the Holy Spirit invest in you with the power of love, now and forever. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Before Dennis will go into play his prayer for us, we we would like to we didn't give him that much give her that much welcome last time. We would like to say thank you, Dennis, for playing and for saying yes to uh, become part of the worship life of Randolph.